Okay, welcome to, to this presentation. So, uh, before starting, who here does not know anything about Docker? Okay, nice. Who has tried some tutorials or something, has tried a little bit? Okay, who use it a lot? Okay, nice. We have a very uh, different audience. So, uh, Ruth already introduced me, so uh, if you want to talk about anything other than Docker, you're welcome to reach me later. So, yeah, this should not be work in progress, but yeah. Uh, I will talk about some of these things. I will talk about what Docker is, um, some, uh, some of Docker basics, how to get started. Uh, and for those who don't know Docker, I hope uh, in the end of this session you will know something, you'll know how to start it. And uh, if you come to the workshop later, I hope you will uh, uh, you will know uh, about some of the best practices to, to work with Docker and to build images. Uh, some of them uh, probably uh, uh, are very good in the context of the last presentation. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about some other th uh, Docker-related things like uh, Kubernetes, uh, Swarm uh, and uh, other things. Um, because this is a very small presentation, it, there is a lot to, to talk about the other things. So, what's all the, the, the fuss about Docker? Uh, it's being very, uh, very used or at least spoken of uh, lately. Um, but uh, the Docker uh, technology, the um, containers technology uh, exists for, for many years now, uh, and Docker uh, is a tool that uh, that uh, appeared uh, some years ago and um, why is it so, so used so uh, it's being increasingly used uh, in many open source projects there are uh, lots of uh, um, uh, like uh, mysql postgres uh, and uh, a lot of open source projects there are uh, already docker ready uh, and uh, yeah it's very easy to, to, to get started with Docker. So uh, let's check some of the what Docker is and uh, what is not. So essentially, Docker is a tool. Uh, is a tool for managing containers, managing uh, container images, um, and everything around the, the containers ecosystem. Uh, it's open source, the, at least the, the community edition. Docker has uh, also an enterprise edition. I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, it's able to run on Linux, Mac, and Windows, and that's a big advantage. And, and I think, in my opinion, it's why Docker uh, got so much traction. Uh, it's lightweight and fast, as most of container technologies are. Uh, it's great for microservices, and it's great for both uh, develop developers and um, and system administrations. Um, so, but. It is not. It is not a virtual machine, uh, although uh, many people start by using containers as a virtual machine. Um, so Docker is not intended to be used as it, uh, although there are some, some other container technologies that are more uh, friendly of that use case. Docker is not one of that. Uh, it is not intended to, to be used as a regular server, so you are not supposed to install every package, every service running on a con Docker container. Um, uh, although there are some people who do that, uh, I highly uh, discourage that. So, and uh, essentially, Docker is not a magic that solves everything. Uh, and it's, um, it's not a tool for every, every problem. Uh, so uh, usually people that start working with Docker fall in into that uh, uh, everything is a nail problem. Uh, so uh, yeah, don't expect to, to fix everything with Docker. Um, so let's make a quick recap uh, about what containers are. Uh, if you want to know more, the next talk uh, we'll, we'll talk about this, I think, so um, you're welcome to, to go there. 
Um, so before we have we had the the physical servers, uh, meaning that uh, every um, every application uh, was in in a big ser uh, physical server. Uh, it has uh, lots of uh, problems. It, uh, so it was intended for monolithic applications. Um, it was slow to to development. It has huge costs on maintenance uh, maintenance and everything was difficult like scaling, migrating, maintaining. Um, then it came the, the, the virtual machines that uh, are a lot better for a lot of things, uh, mostly on the resource uh, management. Um, it's easier to scale, it's ready uh, to, to use in the, in the cloud. Um, and, uh, but it still has some limitations. Uh, with virtual machines, you have to pre-allocate uh, resources like CPU, memory, uh, storage. It's not 100% like that, I know, but uh, for, the, for the matters of understanding containers, uh, I'll assume it is. Um, and um, it has a linear growth. If you have 10, uh, um, 10 virtual machines, uh, 10 copies of it, it will uh, allocate it will need 10 times uh, more resources uh, and uh, of course there's the the operating system virtualization uh, that every um, every virtual machine has to to virtualize the whole uh, operating system and that's a big limitation as we are going to see containers uh, are not just the future they're uh, already used in production in many places um, so Main advantages, uh, applications run directly on the kernel. Um, so it's just like running uh, uh, any software directly on the host. Uh, it has better resource management. It's a lot faster than uh, to, to start, to, to start from scratch, to create a container. It's a lot faster than creating a, a virtual machine. It's lighter, uh, mainly in terms of storage requirements. Uh, and uh, it is fastest to scale and uh, it may be more secure, uh, may have uh, uh, more security uh, in the, the, um, the part that you d don't have to, to install so many packages to maintain them. So for example, SSH, you don't need to install SSH in the, the containers, so it's uh, one less um, uh, attacking vector. And uh, graphically, it's the same, almost the same slide that uh, Jesus presented. So the main difference uh, between virtual machines and Docker um, is uh, around the, the guest uh, OS uh, operating system virtualization. So every virtual machine has to virtualize the operating system and the applications run on top of the, uh, that virtualization. Uh, um, in the other hand, Docker, uh, just runs directly on the, the host, so it doesn't have to virtualize an operating system. It means it's a lot faster to start uh, a Docker container, and uh, you don't have those, uh, those additional uh, resources consumed uh, by the, the operating system uh, virtualization. Some pros and cons of Docker. So, uh, a really big plus for me at least, it's really easy to get started. And um, it's uh, greatly supported the, by the, the community and widely used, as I said before. Uh, there are many projects uh, that uh, state on the tutorial, you can just start with uh, this Docker command and it's ready to go. Um, I'm gonna show that uh, later. It's really portable in the sense that if you want to migrate to the cloud or change cloud provider from AWS to Azure to whatever, uh, it's really easy to do that. Um, it's, uh, it's also portable in the sense that um, between developers, if you have to welcome a new team to, to the develop, if a new member to the developers team, you can just share uh, the Docker configurations for the application and uh, you don't have to spend a whole day installing dependencies and installing software, configuring things and whatnot. So you can just share the, the um, at least in theory, if things are well done, you can just share the Docker configuration and instead of spending uh, many hours, sometimes days, configuring uh, the project for a new member, you can just do it in some minutes, including installing Docker. Um, so, 
Uh, mm, 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 mm. It works on both uh, Linux, Mac and Windows. Uh, I'm gonna say that um, in Mac and Windows there's the uh, Docker desktop um, that uh, behind the scenes it's a Linux virtual machine uh, and that is intended for, for developers. Uh, so if you have a Mac like this crap uh, like this computer uh, you ha you can install docker and run it and use it like it was uh, a linux server uh, there's also windows uh, docker for windows that run docker uh, that will run windows containers but i'm not going to talk about that as i don't have any experience uh, with it i just know and i'm aware of the existence of it Docker works a lot uh, as a documentation, so you have uh, you can document how containers are connected, how they interact with with each other, and uh, in my opinion, it's a good pro, and it's easy to install dependencies. Uh, like if you want to test a, a specific version of MySQL, for example, you can run a container with Docker. You can test that version, and in the end, you can just delete it. Or if you want to um, create another container with a different version of the same software, you can just install it side by side. They don't interact with each, with each other, they don't uh, uh, mess with each other. So uh, it's really easy uh, with it. Um, also, Docker takes advantage of uh, a kernel feature, uh, the copy and write. Uh, for those who don't know it, uh, copy and write says like, um, if you do a, a copy of a file, it will just copy the, 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 the pointer for that file and only if you change the file uh, then it will really copy the physical, um, the physical f uh, bits and bytes. Uh, meaning, if I uh, create 10 copies of the same container, it will, just, it, it will not uh, uh, need 10 times the, the storage of it. Um, and so in that term, it's, it's also really useful. Some cons. Not all applications benefit from containers. Uh, for example, using a database in containers is very discussable, uh, and I'm not going to discuss it right now, but uh, it's discussable. Bare metal performance uh, is supposed to, to stay that way. Uh, Docker was not intended to, to replace mainframes and big monolithic apps, although you can. Uh, I would not advise to, to do it uh, because you, you will not have so much return of it. Persistence data, so the data that you, you need to care and you need to store, uh, you have to do it uh, mindfully, you have to know what, uh, what files you, you need to store because containers are intended to be, to be ephemeral, so you should not care if you lose any data. Uh, so if you want to store data, you have to be careful with that. And uh, you also can run uh, uh, graphical applications with Docker, but it's a little bit messy. It doesn't work on every system the same. So uh, although it's possible, uh, it's not very uh, pretty to, to do. Another thing about Docker, it's the, the isolation about containers in general. Um, Docker specifically, uh, when it creates uh, a container, it will create, use the, the kernel namespaces to, to ensure that no container can access the other, the other container information. So it's completely isolated in terms of uh, processing, in terms of uh, memory, and also in terms of system allocation, uh, sys file system isolation. The, the lib container D uh, ensures that no container can access the file system of another container uh, unless uh, it is specified so too um, and uh, another big advantage of docker and i think this is a, a big advantage uh, of docker uh, comparing to to other uh, to other container technologies and tools that's the network isolation docker makes it very easy to 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 manage the the networking so uh, by default when i create a container uh, docker uh, docker will create a virtual um, 
uh, virtual network and uh, the Docker will stay isolated. It will stay uh, um, connected to, to a bridge on the Docker host so it can uh, access the, the internet and whatnot. But two containers cannot access uh, each other uh, through the network because uh, uh, Docker will take care of that. Um, yeah, and uh, if you want to, to connect two containers, you have specifically to create a link uh, so that both can communicate. Any questions until now? No. So, some of the basics. Uh, here you can read the description of a Docker container. It's on the website, but a container contain it's like a box that contains every software dependency and every binary, uh, so it can run the, the application without the need of any uh, underlying system uh, files or libraries. Um, it's, it has application isolation, as I said. Uh, runs directly on the kernel and um, a container is an instance of a docker image. What is a docker image? So again you can read this description but um, a docker image uh, is, um, is a template for running a, a container. Um, it's, um, it has a list of uh, a referenced list of layers as I'm going to talk uh, later and um, Mainly, it, it is like a, a package uh, that is immutable, so you cannot change the, the configurations of, the, of an image. Um, if you want to change something, you have to, to build another image from scratch. Um, and uh, if you want to compare with object-oriented programming, an image it's like a class and uh, an object uh, it's like a container. So uh, an object is an instance of a class, as a container is an instance of a Docker image. Also, another basic uh, a Docker file is a blueprint uh, with instructions on how to build a Docker image. Uh, it's just a text file like this one. Uh, it's a list of ordering uh, instructions and it works as a documentation. So when you have a Docker file, you basically uh, say, so I start with an empty, uh, an empty container uh, with nothing installed on it. The first line, uh, the from, uh, it's a, um, a Docker file command. Uh, so it states what's the basic file system that I'm going to work with. There are lots of official uh, base images. Uh, Ubuntu is one of them. Uh, it, uh, it states like the file system is like an uh, Ubuntu file system from scratch. Uh, and then I say all the, the, the steps that I need to, to use in order to build an image with, with all the dependencies that I need, the, the package dependencies and whatnot. Uh, so for those who know uh, Docker and Docker files, this is wrong. I'm going to address this later on the workshop. <laughs> so. How to get started with Docker? So that that's really easy on Windows and Mac. You just go to to the links and install Docker Desktop as any other uh, as any other app, um, as any other software. On Linux, you can do a lot of things. The most easiest way to do that it's downloading the script and run it as root. I don't recommend it, but if you if you don't love your machine, you can do it, of course, and it's really easy. Uh, the other way, uh, as I recommend, is go to the install instructions or read the the, the, the installing sc installation script and uh, replicate what's there. And um, yeah, the then the installation uh, I recommend following some post install instructions uh, because um, uh, the default way to to run Docker is running with sudo permissions and. Uh, it's really easy to set up the things so you don't need to, to use sudo. There's also, uh, I didn't put on this slide, but I will update it. Uh, there's also a new feature, an experimental feature, that it's um, rootless Docker, that you can install Docker uh, inside uh, a user with just user permissions, no root access, and you can use Docker with that. It's still experimental. It has some limitations. You cannot uh, expose um, ports uh, be below 1,000 and something uh, because you need root to do that. But it, 
uh, I think it works um, fairly uh, good enough. So after you install, you just use Docker on the, the command line. Uh, it's a default way to do. There are some tools to run it uh, graphically and with um, a GUI tool, but uh, I will focus on uh, using the Docker command command line. Uh, and yes, um, I think I have time for a quick demo. Uh, so. I'll try to, to, to do demo. I'm not sure if I will make it on this laptop, but um, let's try it. Maybe, maybe I can do it. Um, so I will try to, to do a basic example on how to, to set up a web server. Um, yeah. Let me just... So uh, let me try to do it. So you, in order to use the um, uh, Docker image to instantiate a, a Docker container, you, um, you can do it uh, using the, the image directly from the, um, the Docker Hub repository. Um, or you can uh, create a, a Docker file um, and uh, create an image uh, as specified here in the Docker file. Um, there are some commands uh, like this from uh, that I already told you. Uh, so this is based on the Nginx uh, web server image uh, that it's uh, available on the Docker Hub. Uh, it's open source. You can see how that image was built. Um, it has an associated Docker file. Um, and I'm using it as a base for my project. Um, and I'm uh, using this command copy that what it states is that I'm copying from my local machine, from my local server, uh, I'm copying the, the content of this uh, static HTML uh, directory. I'm copying all the directory to, to, the, to inside the, the container uh, on this, uh, on this uh, path. Um, this is the, uh, I followed the documentation of the Nginx image uh, in order to do that. Um, and so that's how I know where the, the path is. Um, so if I, uh, I have here the, the Docker file in order to, to build uh, a new image, to create a new image, I use the docker build uh, command. Um, and I say the, the name of the image, my demo. Yeah. I'll create this image with the name my demo and I'll uh, pass the, the context of the file system that I want the, the image to be built. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I already have on my host the, the, um, the Nginx uh, image. If I didn't have it already cached on my system, it will download automatically from the Docker Hub. I don't need to, to do any additional downloads. It will do it um, all alone. Uh, so my image is already created. I can create now uh, a container uh, using that, uh, that image as a template. So in order to do that, uh, let me run this. I will do Docker run, run is the subcommand to create new containers. Uh, I'll run it in foreground, so in detached mode. Um, I'll give it a name, just um, it's easier to, to deal with it. Uh, so this is the basic syntax to, to create a container. I'm specifying that I, I want to create a container based on my demo when uh, image that I just created. Um, as this is a web server, uh, I want it to, to be uh, exposed um, 
on my my network with a, a, a port opened by default the um, the nginx image will listen on the at port the the http port um, and remember that i said docker uh, creates a, a, an isolated virtual network just for this container so if i just create a container um, like this or uh, without specifying further instructions on the network it will create a container it will be listening on the AT port but only for that uh, virtual network so on my host I could I, I would not uh, be able to reach uh, that uh, that network interface so I would not be able to to reach the the web server in order to do that I can use uh, uh, this flag uh, minus P and that means port and I can specify that on my, uh, this is a map. So on my local uh, local server, uh, the the port 9090 will map to the container uh, network on port 80. What this does? So I create shit. So I'll create the container. The container is running on uh, background. And I can just um, create a new. Uh, let me open a browser. So, yeah. So if I access localhost on port host on port 1990, I can access the the web server that I just created. Those, this index file that uh, we are reading and the, the image uh, were on that uh, static uh, HTML directory that I copied inside the, 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 the image. And um, yeah, uh, if I want to change something inside this image, I can edit, for example, this index.html. And if I change it uh, like this, So if I um, if I change it, I would not see any change uh, directly on the the web server. Uh, if I refresh this, it will be the same because I built the image with the static files compiled into the that image. And as the image is immutable, if I want to change something on this uh, uh, this container. Um, I could recreate the container, but uh, it would have the, 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 same, um, the same appearance and the same files that were created in the image. So if I want to, um, to apply those changes, I have to rebuild it. Uh, and it will have, um, if you come back, um, each image has uh, an associated uh, hashtag, uh, a tag, or hash. Uh, and uh, this new build has a new hash function, uh, has a new hash string. So I just built another image with the, the change that I've made. Uh, and if I want to replace um, that uh, that container, I have to remove it first. Um, demo one. Uh, and after remove it, I can just uh, run the same command again. It will create another container. And if I refresh it, it will have the, uh, the, uh, the change that I've uh, done. This is not very useful for developers, uh, as I want to change something uh, on, the, on a HTML file. I don't want to, to build the image again. So uh, one thing you can do, it's using, um, uh, it's using the... Um, some persistence uh, features. So I'm just going to, to speak about um, persistence and volumes, and I'm going to show you uh, how you can take advantage uh, of that. So uh, volum volumes uh, are intended to, to persist data, um, so that when you remove the, the container, that data is not lost. Um, it's also used to sharing data between containers 
Um, and uh, there are some types of uh, volumes, like uh, bind mounts, named volumes, and uh, also uh, volumes uh, mounted on the memory. So if you need some, some performance uh, file system. Uh, and there are also other types like uh, N NFS uh, volumes. So, how would you use uh, a volume to in this context? So, uh, I'm going to stop this container again. And I'm going to recreate it, um, but this time I'm going to specify a volume. What I want to, to, um, to do here is uh, so, like the, the, um, like the port mapping that I was publishing uh, on a port on my host uh, to inside a port on my uh, Docker container, in volumes is like the same. So, I'm going to specify um, a path, uh, an absolute path on my, um, on my uh, Docker host. Um, uh, static uh, HTML. And I'm gonna map it um, to to that uh, file that I showed you uh, before. That it's this shit. I don't have space. Uh, something went wrong. So, yeah, I hope to, yeah. So, I'm mapping my local directory, static HTML, to that uh, Nginx uh, path. And when I access, not this one, when I access this, I hope, oh, it's forbidden. Shit, what did I do wrong? Thank you. Thank you. I don't have enough space here. Yeah, let's see if everything. Okay. I have the, the same thing here, but this time, instead of reading the, the file for, from the image I created before, it will read that file directly from my Docker host. So if I. If I go to that uh, index.html file and I change here this, I will automatically change the 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 final uh, the final thing. So in order to uh, for for the development perspective, it's much better to 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 do this. You change your local files and do it till. Uh, take immediate uh, change on the, the Docker container. Um, and that's it for volumes. Uh, I'll try to be really quick because we are running out of time. Uh, so most applications that we have uh, rely on multiple services, uh, are not just one service. So for, uh, uh, usually we need the, or HTTP proxy or some kind of cache or some kind of database on my uh, application. And uh, for that, there's a tool that it's Docker Compose that it's used for managing multi-container multi applications. And uh, it's essentially a wrapper around the Docker client. Um, it is uh, configured using a file, a Docker Compose .yaml, that specifies the services, so the image ports, environments, uh, everything and volumes and networks. Uh, so it's just a file like this one. Um, here I'm specifying a, a, a DB uh, service in the WordPress service. Uh, I tell uh, what images these containers will be, uh, what type of images, what type of, what kind of ports it will expose and whatnot. Um, and then uh, I can create uh, uh, um, the, the whole stack uh, in one time. Uh, I'll try to show that uh, here. So, yeah. 
So I here have my Docker Compose.yaml. So it's like that one. I'm persisting the, the data for the database uh, so that when the container is removed, I still maintain it. The, the MySQL image that I'm going to use is Docker ready. So uh, this means that when I bootstrap the, the database, uh, if I use this environment variables, it will automatically create a new database, a new user, password, and whatnot. Uh, it will bootstrap everything alone. So this is a work uh, for the team that uh, built the, the, the image for MySQL. Uh, but it's uh, one advantage uh, for Docker is that it's really easy to, to get started with this kind of images. And I'm going to use uh, the official image for WordPress. Um, that has a WordPress on it. Uh, it relies on a database. In order to specify uh, where the database is, uh, I use these uh, environment variables. Uh, I specify the user, password, and database name, uh, and the database host. I want to highlight this configuration here uh, because um, when working on the Docker Compose, uh, all the services here uh, are on the, the same network because uh, this is a multi-application, uh, multi-service application that needs to, to, to contact, to connect. Uh, all containers need to connect with each other, usually. So the default is all containers will be created on the same network. And the, the way that I have to access from one container to another is using the, the service name. So here I specified the DB name. And here on the, the other container, I can just use the DB host name. Docker internally has a DNS server, uh, so it can translate the, that DB name to the, the virtual uh, IP address that it has. Um, and that's it. Uh, and so this is the, the um, docker compose.yaml. Uh, in order to create all the, the containers that it needs to, to run, I just do uh, docker compose uh, app, and I'll run it in detached mode so I don't see uh, all, all the logs uh, in front of me. And if I didn't have the, those images uh, pre-downloaded on my Docker host, it will uh, grab them for, for the Docker hub. Uh, server, those uh, MySQL and uh, WordPress images, but as, as I'm having them here, I can do just this. And then I can just access my local host on port uh, uh, 8080, I think, or 8000. 8000. And if everything's okay, I have here a, a WordPress um, website built from scratch. Uh, in in minutes or less, um, and yeah, I can just use this as a regular uh, WordPress website and whatnot. I'm not going to do this as I don't have time, but yeah. So it's really easy to to get started with. This is not demo four. Uh, to get started with Docker because of this this uh, easy ways to to bootstrap things. So. Some conclusions. It's pretty, pretty easy to, to get started with Docker. I think it, this is why Docker uh, uh, got so much traction and it's so much uh, well known. Uh, it's because of these advantages. Uh, it's being widely adopted within the open source community. So uh, as much people are using that, uh, it brings more, even more people uh, to it. It's really easy to, to build a stack with multiple containers. This is a, a great advantage uh, of Docker. Not every Docker not every container technology has this feature. And uh, the isolation, the container isolation uh, is a default, but it is very easy to override that default uh, and put the containers to communicate with each other. And that's everything. You can uh, access the, those presentation slides uh, here. It's on GitHub, so and you can meet, reach me on Telegram or whatnot. Uh, so questions?
is also in that spot. No, this is just my presentation. This is my. Can you can you tell us? Uh, I'm not sure. It will be uh, posted. Okay. Is it only x86 or can you run it on ARM as well? Uh, so you can run it uh, on every uh, on on ARM as well, um, but you have to be aware how Docker uh, works. So uh, as I said, the the binaries and libs and everything and whatnot are run directly on the kernel. So um, there is a, a, a Docker for ARM. You can install Docker there. But if you want to create a container, that image must support ARM. If it doesn't support ARM, you have to to compile the image, you have to build the image on an ARM processor. Uh, so there are, there are already many images that, uh, that support uh, multiple architectures. Um, not everyone supports it. Uh, it's not... Uh, I think right now it's easy to, to check if the, if the image supports other architectures. I think the Docker Hub uh, has uh, a little flag uh, that, uh, that tells what supports but uh, yeah you have to to be aware of that but you can install it. i have a, a docker running on my raspberry pi and it's working so it's possible uh, tell it uh, for me <laughs> for example uh, for the mysql database uh, you're mm. running another So uh, it's it's uh, really tricky to do that to to put a container accessing the the network on my host. Uh, Docker is not built for that use case. It's possible, uh, although you have to to in Linux you can specify the 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 IP address of the 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 the, the host, uh, and you can access it. Uh, from there, on Mac and Windows, it's not so trivial because of how networking uh, works there. I'm not sure on Windows, but on Mac, uh, you cannot do that. Uh, but uh, instead, in uh, the um, the Docker for uh, Docker desktop, uh, it has some it's some hard coded uh, URL, uh, some hard coded host that you can use in order to access the the host. Um, I think it's something like Docker dot internal dot something, uh, and you can access. But um, yeah, you can do it for testing. It's uh, sometimes it's okay to do that. Um, but the right way to do it uh, so that you can build an application that is production ready uh, is having some kind of uh, host name that uh, you can reach from the, the outside. So. No. You can have a service, so uh, a container can reach the, the, the outside world. It just doesn't live inside the network. It, it is isolated, so it cannot access other virtual uh, uh, networks, it cannot access other, net, uh, other containers unless uh, there's a link to it, but it can access the internet. So uh, if you can reach a database that it's on some server, if you can reach it from your local host, um, if you can reach it from your host, uh, so uh, if you can connect uh, a database client from your host, you can use the same uh, uh, database host, database password, uh, everything uh, from a Docker container. It will bridge from your host and reach the, the outside world. Uh, but yeah, you can use it like that and the, it's the, the, the correct usage uh, of it. You have an external service and you connect the container to that external service. But to access that external service on your host, uh, you have to, to, um, to be more aware of how things work. Okay, any more questions? We are finishing, so thank you. And yeah. <laughs>